Good morning, Don. How are you doing today? I'm just fine. Thank you. Dude, I got to tell you, I really love what you've done with this Christmas music because I, I looked right at my wife and I said, you know what this is? This is a storyteller's Christmas and because, I mean, you really take me into a newer layer of understanding something as simple as Blue Christmas. But then again, is it really a simple song? Well, that arrangement is different from any other one that you'll ever hear. It uh, goes from minor to major and back again throughout the song. And um, I just had a, you know, an, an idea for that, and um, it turned out really great. The guys in Nashville uh, knew exactly what I wanted to do, and uh, we had a great uh, Dennis Soley. Uh, I think played most of the saxophone parts on that and he's he's a legend in nashville and uh yeah i just really uh am so happy with this these tracks have been released before years ago and they were completely redone and uh suddenly i never liked the way my voice sounded i never liked certain instrumentation we changed all that and suddenly the voice sounds like it should sound and we put a very swinging upright bass on some of these things, wow. like um, a guy named Jim Ferguson, who I've known for 30 years. Uh, and he was on some of the original stuff, too. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I just really am happy the way it turned out. Wow. I, I always thought it was just radio people that said, I don't like the way that I sound. But in radio, once it's out there, it's gone forever. So to for you to go back and revisit this, my God, that that's like a dream come true. It really is, because this stuff bothers me. Dad don't like that, you know, and each time I would hear it. So I got rid of it, and I fixed it, and uh, it, it, it sometimes, you know, uh, you'll think something bothers you that you don't like, and you'll change it, and it actually doesn't sound as good as it did before for some strange reason, but that was not the case in record. Man, I'll never forget going into a gallery with my paintings on a canvas, and, and the curator actually said, uh, if you don't like it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't belong to you anymore. How do you, how do you deal with that, Don? Because, is it, because, I mean, I realize that we're the ones that are present while it's being created, but there's always those outsiders that have a different interpretation. Well, you know, once you put a record out there, um, it's out there. It's like, who knows what it's going to do, where it's going to end up. You know, one of these songs that's been around a long time could end up in a movie and yep. some uh, very famous track. So um, you really don't know. Um, that just has to do with re recording. But as far as songs uh, that I might write, uh, you never know who's going to do something with a song uh, and uh, how it's going to end up. So you really have to just kind of let it go, you know, and, uh, but you want to make sure that it's the absolute best that it can be. Yeah. Yeah. The song, Oh Little Town of Bethlehem. So many times the only place we get to listen to that is in church. I mean, I, I love the idea that that that's part of this plan right now. We have some wonderful background singers on yeah. that. I did, I did most of the background singing arranging. Uh, that is to say, I told the singers what I wanted them to do and they did it. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's a gorgeous song. Has your ear for music changed over the years in the way that as, as we all mature, we all have this different sight and sound that we carry forward? Well, I haven't matured, so that's one of the wonderful <laughs> things about, about me. I, I'm still about 13 years old, yep. and uh, I like what I like, and I can't stand what I don't like, and... I will say more of what I don't like is around and out there now than that I do like. So that's uh, closing in on me, I guess, a bit. But uh, I have my, you know, I have my records and I have the things that I have around me that I want. And uh, I have great musician friends that I've known for sometimes over 30 years. Wow. And we go on the road and... You know, we make rock and roll. We do what we, we we do what we do. So I still have that. When you speak of those friends, do you have a writing instrument that's always been with you when you're pinning out those songs? Because because I'm a writer and I have pins that are like 25 years old. Um, the thing about 
about it is the guys that I work with are all more, they're more than family. I, I got to say that. Mm-hmm. Uh, they really are. Um, and I actually have written some songs with one of my guitar players, and um, I have a new album called American Boys, which is going to be coming out in February. <laughs> so we have a lot of plans for things uh, to be released. Don't you love the way that music builds its relationship around you? It's 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 all. I, I just love that story where people just continue to grow with their art, and and you're a great example of that. Where it's like, okay, well, I'm not going to turn it off, and it's not going to turn me off. So therefore, we're going to work together. You know, for many years ahead. Well, you have to use everything. <laughs> everything has to be added on. <clears throat> I don't like. Uh people that talk about reinventing themselves. Yeah. Um, I always thought I was pretty, I was fine. All I needed to do was get better and improve myself. But I don't need to throw away an old Don McLean and then come out with a new Don McLean. I, I just need to make the one I have better each year. Everything has to be added on and added on. So I, I keep everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, when you have a so a, in, in a you know because snow comes down in so many different ways, and when I hear this one, it's almost like you're in the mountains somewhere. You really truly experienced it, and you're saying, "Hey, look, this is how I want you to see your own snowstorms." Well, that's the nature of being an interpreter. You know, there are two things that I do. One is I write songs, and then I make records of those songs, and the other is I sing other people's songs, and I don't consider the singing of other people's songs to be a small thing. Yeah. It's it's a major thing to me. So when I take on a project like this <clears throat> and uh, we take a, a little song like Let It Snow, which everybody has done, uh, we actually worked up a, a jazz, really a jazz yes. arrangement. Yep of that song and that's a swinging group there of about six guys Um, and it starts off with that little salt peanut thing you know that uh, uh, I forget the the jazz guy that used to do that (laughs) but uh, Dizzy Gillespie you know that whole thing and uh, we did it the other night I just came back from Hawaii and sang a couple of nights the blue note and uh we did it with guitars and yeah it really really felt good the audience really really loved it are, are you shocked by the way that people still just love the hell out of you i mean i mean it's, it's you're such a major staple in our lives well i can't tell you how much that means to me I, when i hear that and i you know there are a lot of people that in my business that have monumental egos uh, that are always trying to, you know, prove how important they are. And I don't think of myself as important at all, but I love it when people tell me that the songs that I've written or recordings that I've made uh, have meant something to them. Uh, Because so much of life is um, negative, you know, you know. It really is. You get bad news from all over the place. And it's tough. People are, you know, it's tough making it. So if I can provide something, you know, along with other artists and other experiences that people have in order to make life bearable, I'm just so happy to hear it. And and you give us permission to create with you because I, to this day, I got to tell you, I'm still trying to break down American Pie. I think it's six pieces of amazing poetry that just happened to become one song. What, what is that? Is that what it is? Well, I'm, I'm lucky now because there's a very popular documentary called The Day the Music Died, the story of Don McLean's American Pie. And it streams on Paramount Plus. And it it will tell you everything that you need to know about this song, how I wrote it, and the long and winding road uh, that I took in order to uh, get to the point where I wrote this song. Because this took 10 years to write. Oh, my God. Um, starting with the death of Buddy Holly and then finding myself 
singing with Pete Seeger in, in 1966 and 7 and 8 and 9, and then being surrounded by a lot of people who were very creative and a lot of scientists also because he was on the cutting edge of uh, the environmental movement before there even was one. Mm -hmm. So I was so lucky to be right there. And anyway, I decided I wanted to write a big song about America. I mean, a major song about America. And yet I didn't want, you know, this land is your land or somewhere over there or, or, uh, you know, uh, America the Beautiful or something like that. It's almost like you, you've you learned how to tap into us because when you do a song like God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen, I mean, it, 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 it folds so much into my life because I just want to sing right there with you. It's like it's like you're saying, do it, do it, sing with me. I, it's okay. <laughs> well, absolutely it's okay. <laughs> it's a great thing to do. I, I think that, um, you know, music should bring joy, you know, into people's lives. And uh, these songs uh, come from a very long tradition of people singing them. Mm -hmm. You know, go around caroling in front of your window back in the old days. Uh, you know, people used to sing Christmas carols and, and go around three or four people would sing them, you know. Um, oh, it's, it's a beautiful thing. We, we've lost touch. I really lost touch with so much uh, tradition. Uh, and it doesn't have to be folk tradition or any of that stuff. It's just um, the things that people do, you know, to make life better mm -hmm. uh, have been replaced by uh, uh, spectacle and uh, too much information, you know. And, uh, and I think that we've lost it. You have to believe in something. And I think this is something that I figured out as, as an old guy, and that is that if you if, if you don't believe in in something, you uh, the country is lost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at the people out there, the Chinese uh, people over in the Middle East. These people deeply believe in something, and it makes them very powerful. Mm -hmm. We have lost our belief in in whatever you know. We've been diluted by so many different uh, things and we so I think you really have to start by believing in yourself if I were to say that and I would say that as you move through life doing the things that are righteous and that are truthful that you discover God yep. Yep. because uh, and I think the connection there would be if you can't get with that at least Believe in yourself, and don't let people uh, change you, and don't let people corrupt you. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's the problem. Is there's so much corruption uh, now, and that is what this kind of music stands in opposition to. It, it's purity. It's on. It, it, it's it's uh, uh, a sacredness, uh, really, and that's that is not corruptible. Yeah. I'm so I'm so glad that you speak like this, and the reason why is because I have an iHeartRadio channel that's based on if we don't get to know ourselves first, how do we expect to be open enough to know somebody else? And it, and and I call it vocal defragging by just asking yourself the question instead of asking other people, because if the other people are wrong, then you hold it against them as well as yourself. And and you seem to be that type of person that I'm going to ask myself the question, and then I'm going to follow where my heart puts me. Well, I would say that's true. You know, I, I I have I am a romantic, so I have uh, I love romance. I don't think I'm much good at love. Uh, I wouldn't have two marriages under my belt, but uh, I'm I love romance. I like things to be. I like to be doing something. I I felt that being who I wanted to be was romantic. Um, you know, a singer and a songwriter and a and a rambling man with a guitar, you know, who uh, put his ideas forward on a stage to people and uh, moved on after that, you know, didn't stick around. You know, people have this, the advantage and the disadvantage of being planted in one place. I don't have that. 
in my whole life. I've never worked for anyone in my entire life, yeah. except when I was a paper boy. Yeah. And, uh, and that's the only job I ever had. And after that, I, realized, I, I discovered the guitar, and I was able to make more money with a guitar than as a paper boy. So I, <laughs> <laughs> that's how it started. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you speak of that romance, and right away I'm, I'm reminded of the song The Christmas Waltz, and I'm going, oh, my God, there's a vibration in this. I love that kind of a blues vibration, but to get into the blues, you've got to have a love and a romance. Well, that's, again, that swinging uh, combo that we had on some of those tracks. Uh, let it snow and then the, the Christmas waltz and it starts off with a swing and bass you know and uh, I, I I each song I arranged uh, to, to get out of it what it was that I was hearing and um, we were able to you know get that onto onto the tape it's, that's the trick you know is you can have all the ideas you want to have, but if you don't get them to translate uh, into a recording that somebody wants to listen to, yeah, uh, then you're, you know, and each step along the way, you have to succeed. So if you write a song, then you have to arrange it. It has to be produced in a certain way, and it has to result in the kind of request. There's a lot of hoops you got to jump through. Yeah. You know, in order to uh, to get any place in the music business. But to go back, because I always tell people you can't go back into your past. And I'm sitting here talking with you, and you you have gone back, but you earned that ticket to ride to go back to that past with a clearer vision of of, of the of the purpose of that song. Well, yeah, but and and also uh, there's a uh, a recording company that's put this record out and that will put my new album out in February, American Boys, that are releasing 14 other albums of mine that I own. Wow. And every one of those albums is going to be remastered. So albums that are obscure, like Primetime or Headroom, those are going to have a, a whole more uh, a, a bigger dynamic sound because of the uh, uh, fact that they will be remastered but they're all coming out on vinyl and out on cd in the next i don't know couple of years wow I, we've we've got to make plans on getting together in february because i want to break down those songs on that new album because you're not afraid to talk about how you put music together no i'm happy to talk about it and i think it's important that somebody talks about it because you've got so many young people out there who want to play the guitar and want to sing and want to write songs and unfortunately, most of them don't have a clue about how to do it. Right. Um, they just really don't. You know, you have to learn how to write a melody, and you have to learn how to how to express yourself with lyric writing, which is, you know, there's so many art forms that you have to master. Uh, the recording studio, you have to master singing and performing, and uh, and the, and the, the way this happens is that you devote yourself 100% at all times to doing this to the exclusion of just about everything. You know, friends, family, you know, anything. You're always involved with practicing your guitar or your <laughs> piano or your mandolin or something, and you ain't got no time for nothing. That's you know right. what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I, I only laugh because, I mean, we're not getting that time back, but you better enjoy it while it's lasting. <laughs> Well, you want to make something out of yourself, yeah. you know, and um, I think that there are two different, well, there's lots of different kinds of people, but there are people that kind of want to just enjoy their life, and then there are people that want to make something out of themselves, yeah. and they have goals. So there's one thing to dream, you know, there's the American dream, but the American, really, it's the goals that you have, not your dream, that allow you to make your dreams come true. That's how you do it. You don't just sit around and dream. You set goals for yourself. I mean, I was I was working on being Don McLean when I was 14 years old. Yeah. Wow. You know, I was already thinking about 
you know, what I was going to look like and how I was going to sound and, and playing my guitar and, you know, uh, and, and performing and doing all these things, singing and practicing, yep. you know, like hours every day to do these things. Yep, yep. Oh, Don, you got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Thank you. You be brilliant today, okay? Well, thanks for having me on your show. I enjoyed it.